Good afternoon. On the event of the African Development Bank annual meetings of the year 2022, and the topic of supporting a just energy transition in Africa, I would like to give a few words. And I put a stress, a lot of stress on the word just, just energy transition for everybody. I'd like to say that although only accountable for a mere 44% of the global emissions in Africa, which are mainly due to technologies that have been imported over decades, decades from industrialized nations, Africa, which is home to is home to one of the lungs of the earth, is the most vulnerable continent to the impact of climate change. The rise in temperatures, increase in drought and flooding, loss in agriculture yields, and subsequently population displacements are some of the implications and costs caused by the environmental crisis. Industrialized nations should therefore be responsible to fund the related costs of climate resilience fully, in full, being the largest producers of emissions and being the suppliers over decades to such uh, technologies to our continent. Without putting pressures and financial burdens on African countries' budgets, we are now struggling even to provide these budgets to basic needs of its communities. A just transition is crucial when tackling Africa's climate resilience agenda. Currently, African nations are faced with worsening debt levels, which have intensified amid the COVID-19 pandemic as well as the geopolitical tensions. While having limited access to the global climate finance flows, approximately to 3% only, and are still required to allocate funding and take part in the global effort to fend off the impact of climate change. And I think this is unjust. The transition is a complex process. We cannot assume that the movement to clean energy will be immediate. Mobilizing sufficient financing, ensuring technology transfer, and developing suitable regulations are among the areas we need to focus upon, both nationally and internationally. But what I am convinced of is that if climate resilience is not addressed properly, future generations will experience dire food insecurity, poverty, more poverty, and forced population displacements. Now I'd like to address the coming event in Egypt. I believe that the conference of the parties, COP27 in Sharm el-Sheikh on the, on the Red Sea in Egypt, or the African COP will present an engaging platform to address the continent's challenges and opportunities. The key priorities during the COP27 include stimulating global ambitions regarding the nationally determined contributions, aligned with the goals of the Paris Agreement, supporting the shift from pledges and promises to actual implementation, reducing global climate action gap, and empowering youth and civil society to enable positive impact. But I add to that, it's very important that we agree together the cost of this major initiative, global initiative, and who is going to provide for such costs? And I don't see it is fair to Africa that those costs uh, are not in the greatest extent carried out by the more industrialized countries and the countries that really have on net basis much more emissions that are affecting the life across our earth. I look forward to active engagement and collaboration of African policymakers during the 27th session of the conference of the parties, COP27 in Sharm el-Sheikh. Thank you very much.